Hello folks, it's Professor Fiore, and in this video we're going to pick up on our C programming adventure and look at the inverse of the printf. In other words, it's time to get data into our program from the user rather than just printing out. Right? So we've already looked at the print, the printf function, we've looked at integer data, various kinds, and we've looked at real data, both floats and doubles. So now we need the inverse of that. I have my little stub program built up over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a bunch of variables. Well, let's see. Let's just call these like A, B, and C. What do you say? I'm going to need a double. An integer. Uh, and I'm also going to make a, a character buffer. So this is going to be an array. Now, normally we would um, just put a number in here. That's what you would you know, see in a text somewhere. So oh, it's 100. So I got 100 bytes for my buffer. C, however, has a nice little feature in the preprocessor. We can do something called a pound define. So remember the preprocessor runs before the compiler. Basically what this is going to do is sort of a global uh, replace, like a search and replace kind of thing. So I can give this um, a symbol, right? Call it max buffer, and then set that to a value like 100. And then down here, instead of saying it's 100, I say it's max buffer. Now that's really useful if I'm going to do this in several different spots and I want to update something, right? I can just uh, change it up in this one spot. Maybe it's a physical constant. I don't want to have to keep writing it, so I just use a pound defined for it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is something very simple. We're just going to grab uh, a bunch of variables, right, from the user and we're just going to spit them back. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, sort of ask the user for some variables. Right, so I'll say enter a float. Okay, so this is just the prompt. Now here comes the new function, scanf. So scanf Basically, it's scanning the keyboard, the input console. And I need a specifier for this format specifier. So in this case, to float, we use percent uh, %f, just like we would for printf. And then I need to tell the uh, compiler where to place this. Well, that's going to go in the variable a. Now, I don't put an a here. I have to tell it where, because a by itself is the contents of a, what's in that memory location. I have to tell it that memory location, right? Everything, every piece of memory, every byte has a discrete address. The way we get that in C is through an ampersand. So ampersand A literally means address of. So when you see the ampersand, think address of A. All right. Let me just copy this down. Now we're going to enter a Double. Now, because the double takes up twice as much space, it's sometimes known as a long float. So we have to use an LF here. And the print, the printf, right, you can use percent %f for both floats and doubles. But for uh, the scanf, it has to know how much space there is. So you got to tell it's percent %lf or percent %f. So the double was b. Put that in there. Now we want to enter an integer, and just like in printf, that's going to be a percent %d. So for us, that was a c. And again, address of c, where do you stick it? And finally, we're going to, uh, let's say, enter a word. So that's percent %s, and 
Now you would say address of s, the beginning of s, which would be the location zero. We always count from zero in, uh, in arrays in C. The exact reason why will be will become clear a little later on. It makes a lot of sense. For now, just sort of accept it. There is a shortcut. Just saying plain old s is the same as saying address of s0. In other words, the very beginning of s. OK. Ooh, I'm sorry. I called that D. My bad. All right. Now let's just uh, print this out. So the results are, and I'll just, you know, put them right out in sequence here. So we got. All right, so in order, that was, you know, A, B, and A, B, C, D. Okay. All right. Now, let's build this. I'll save it. Build it. Run it. If you haven't noticed, of course, you can just hit the, uh, the execute. And if it hasn't been built, basically, it just looks at the timestamp on the files. And if your C file, if any of your C files are uh, older, uh, excuse me, if they're more recent than the uh, executable, it just rebuilds it. Okay, so enter a float. Say so one, two, three point four. Enter a double. Let's do something a little different. Fifty-four point six seven e minus three. Uh, enter an integer. Fifty-four. Enter a word, wombat. Okay, there you go, all right? All right, so we probably have a little bit of uh, an issue here. You know, uh, floating point values do not have infinite resolution. So sometimes you don't get the exact value that you expect just because it can't. You know, it's like if you have a, uh, a bathroom scale with a one pound resolution, you can't expect it to tell you that you weigh 154.37 pounds, right? So some numbers just can't be represented. And that's something that happens, right? So anyway, here's our uh, 546 E minus three. So that's, you know, 54 milli, right? Beautiful. Um, there's your plain old 54 and there's your wombat. Hey, there's your wombat. If you lost your wombat, there it is. Okay, great. So to recap, you know, we use scanf, we just have to use the right, the proper format specifier. And don't forget that ampersand. Okay. All right. So let's do an example of where this can actually be useful. So I'm going to get rid of this. I've already written a little program here that we can kind of walk through. All right. So what this does, this just calculates power and a, and a resistor. So I've declared three variables, V, R, and P. They're doubles. We have a little title here, right, power calculator. Then it asks, you know, enter the voltage in volts. So these are doubles, so we got a percent LF, right, address of V, enter the resistance in ohms, percent LF again, address of R. Then we do the calculation, which of course is V squared divided by R. Now notice I've done this as V times V divided by R. You could do it this way. P is equal to POW, V raised to the second power divided by R. Now, if you do this, you use the POW function, you're going to have to use, you're going to have to remember to link in your um, math.h header because POW is found in, in the math part, okay, the math library, basically, or the math part of the uh, standard library, however you want to look at that. Um, generally speaking, if you're going to do a square, it's faster and less code to just do a multiply by itself rather than call this. There's more overhead here. So you, most programmers, seasoned programmers, will just do a multiply, multiply, you know, rather than, hey, let's go do a pow. Okay. And then I just have a printf here. Um, notice I've used percent Gs instead of percent Fs. 
remember g will give us the smaller of percent e or percent f in other words it'll either do um, floating point format like scientific notation or it'll do it um, you know the basic way right without an exponent like you know 12.7 whichever is smaller okay so g is the smaller of either the e form or the f form okay so there's our program and uh, let's build this little beastie and it looks like we built successfully double check A little paranoia okay I don't see any warnings okay voltage let's say we have 10 volts something we can figure out in our head our resistance in ohms let's say it's uh, 250 right so that'll be a hundred squared volts divided by 250 and there you go 10 volts across 250 ohms produces 0.4 watts beautiful okay all right so there's an example all right next time this is kind of obvious i think hopefully this is kind of obvious and we just have to use the appropriate formulas for whatever we need you know log base 10 uh, arctan sine you know whatever you need right that's all this kind of stuff next time we're going to look at some bitwise operators and integers now some programmers never use this i mean if you're going to use uh i don't know you're going to write a word processor or something you might not ever need to do bitwise operations right in other words bitwise anding oring exclusive oring complementing things of this nature when we do embedded code we use this tons tons so that's what we're going to look at in the next video see you then